My name is John Keister. It's my passion to promote authenticity and love without expectations by listening and sharing stories in our communities. Today we'll be picking up people from public transit and taking them to wherever they'd like to go. And hopefully we'll learn a little bit more about love and authenticity along the way. Welcome to Destinations. All right, guys, welcome to the car. I'm here with Hashim. Hashim, I'm John, nice to meet you, man. Thanks for nice coming in, I appreciate you, it. Man. Sorry, I totally missed that handshake on you. That's so good. Well, it's so nice to meet you. Like, where uh, where did you grow up? I grew up in West Baltimore, man. Yeah. What was it like gr growing up in West Baltimore? Um, crazy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah? yeah school system, all of that was wild. What is, yeah. what, is your, um, what is your best memory of growing up? Christmases sometimes, you know That's what cool. I mean? Yeah. It was all love within the house, but as you cross the threshold to go outside, then it was madness, you know right. what I'm saying? Yeah. Right, right. Was it the environment in the area yeah, there? Yeah, 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 yeah. So what was the, like the worst thing that ever happened to you as a kid? Wow, I, I can't even say one worst thing, but um, I've seen people get murdered, you know what I'm saying? Things yeah. like that, yeah. How old were you when the first time you saw that? Wow. Um, the first time I seen somebody get murdered, I think I was 15, something like wow. that. Yeah. Wow. And it gave me tough skin, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. What did your mom and dad do for work? I mean, well, my father, he um, he was in prison. You okay. know, so my mother, she worked for the government. So she must have worked really hard in order to be able to work for the government and support. How many brothers and sisters do you yeah, have? I got, I got one sister. One sister? Yeah. And is she older or younger than you? She's a little older. Okay. So what else do you want to tell us about your life? What was it like growing up in West Baltimore? Like, where, how did it bring you to where you are now? It could have been better, you know what I'm saying, yeah. as far as the school system. I'm, I'm a grown man. I'm not going to blame nothing on nobody or nothing like that. But right. um, school system, they, they really could have helped a little more as far yeah. as um, they really ain't teach us nothing too much in Baltimore City schools. Right. It was more like you come to school and the teachers was paid to, you know, babysit us, basically, right. you know. And we ran wild in the school system and really ain't learned too much. And it was, you know, drugs, guns, all type of stuff, man. Jeez. Where, at what grade did you feel like you weren't, like, getting what you needed? Maybe second, third, fourth grade. The teachers, they really wasn't teaching. And I got tired of, you know, crying for help, so I just said the hell with it and just, right. you know what I'm saying? Just gave up. I, I dropped out of high school, man, because yeah. um, I couldn't get to work, man. They, the, the tools they gave me, I couldn't work with that, man. Right. I used to be a teacher, and I would teach algebra, and I would have high school students come to my class that didn't know how to multiply. Oh, right, right, right. And they didn't teach us the basics, man. So um, teachers would call you, you know, dumb, stupid. You had teachers you know call you saying? dumb and stupid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of times. No way. And so that made me, it, it pissed me off. I, I grew up with anger problems, man. And I how dropped out of high school and I started selling drugs. Okay. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I started using drugs, abusing drugs. You know, and drugs take your mind to places, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. If you keep using, you don't want to go, you know what I'm saying? Right. Kind of me up, man, for real. From using drugs and doing all of that, it caused me health problems. So right. I, I had two heart attacks, man. You've had two heart attacks, holy cow. How old are you, by the way? Do you mind, if you mind saying? I'm 40 years old, man. 40? I got two stents in my heart. Oh my God, that's, a, that's wild. From using and abusing drugs. Yeah. But now I stopped using. That's good. You know what I'm saying it's way to been, go. It's been a couple years. You know what I mean. That's but, great. Um, what came into your life that made you like change your perspective on saying, "Hey, I shouldn't be doing this, and I need to, I need to wake up." I started thinking because I lost my mother and my father okay. at an early age. And um, how old were you when your mom and dad died? My father. I was 19. 19. He died from AIDS. He oh, had AIDS. God. My mother, 
When I was 24 years old, she had cancer. Wow. It was a little rough for me. I wasn't that young, but I still, I still was young, you know. I was homeless at one point. Right. Yeah, I was just, um, you know, crashing at friends or, or women. I was seeing or okay. evil, or evil, abandoned houses. I would sleep there. It's wild, man. You know, and um. Up, man. Yeah. My story and a lot of the stories of Baltimore City, man. We we sing too much. So how can we go and help the next generation? What what are things that we can do I was about to, to say. improve the um, improve for the people that are coming up and have a better opportunity? What do you think? And the school system got a lot to play in it. Okay. More activities, more you know, more youth centers for the kids. Right. Give us another direction besides gun violence. You know what I'm saying? Gangs. Right. Drugs. We gotta have another outlook. Cause I mean. It ain't much to do, so what's the next best thing when you living in the hood, man? Right. You know, drugs, sex, and guns. And that's the only pleasure you're getting. Right. Ain't no other, ain't no, ain't no love. How have you learned to love on other people? Like, what's, what's happened in your life that you've learned to love? Have you received love in your life? The thing that made me love is the fact that a lot of people ain't show me a lot of love. Right. So I push that in my kids. Mm -hmm. Cause I seen with the lack of love and care on a person do to you, it made me bitter, it made me angry. Yeah. I wanted to fight, I wanted to, you know, I wanted to do everything wrong. It's just like I ain't had no heart. Right. I had no sympathy, man. But when I had children, it changed a little. What happened inside of you when you had children? You bring another life into this world. You see how crazy it is, man, and it, it make you think. What kind of words were coming to your head when you're experiencing that? I, can't, I don't know, man. I can't even really think about the words, but I know the feeling. You didn't want to fail your kids? I didn't want to fail them, and I know the feeling. You know what I'm saying? No, you know the feeling, love, yeah. yeah. Okay. I ain't really loved till I had children. Okay. You know? Right. What did your, uh, you said your mom and your grandmother showed you love. What are things that they did that, that made you feel love? They, something small, like, I love you. So do you feel like words of affirmation and, and speaking to you really connects with you best? I mean, it, it helps. How do you communicate love now to your kids and to your family now? I show them I love them, man. My kids, whenever I can, I, I, I make sure they got new shoes on their feet. If they hungry, I, I feed them, you know right. what I'm saying? Things like that. I never got that from my father. I can't leave. I seen my father probably once in my life, maybe twice. You've only seen him twice. Yeah. Uh, wow. I ain't got too much to say about Baltimore, man. It's it's crazy, man. Yeah. You know, you gotta watch where you step, and even when you do that. It's a problem, you know? Yep. Yeah, it's no, nowhere is safe. Is there any places that, um, or times in your life that um, that you have felt safe? No, I can't say that. Been robbed, Jeez. shot at, bullets whistling past your head. You ever, you ever been shot at? You ever heard? You, no. ever, you ain't never. I've shot a gun before, but I've never been shot you ain't at never before. Heard bullets passing past my yeah, head. No, you never heck heard no. That. That's why I go to shot. To therapy now and having my psychiatrist, man. You know, I, I hear gunshots, man. In your head? Yeah. yeah. You know, like, what they, they say, like, PS, whatever it is. PTSD. I get, yeah, I got that. I mean, it's, it's really, it's like, I mean, you can say it's a war zone, really, it's kind of like that. Mm -hmm. It's really like that. Yeah. Yeah, I done seen a lot, man. I don't even really want to go into, but just know, you know, I done seen a whole lot. And it fucks your mind up, man, for real. I mean, to be honest, as far as crime in this city, I ain't never gonna stop, man. Yeah. What do you think is driving crime? The lack of, you know, um, Just the jobs. Right, okay. Everything, man. 
we lacking. Right. We don't have enough to even survive on a day to day. Right. And then drug abuse, you know. You got to feed that high. You got to feed that drug, man. Right. Right. Thank God I stopped using drugs, because if I didn't, man, I'd probably be robbing y'all right, right now, man. You know what I'm saying? For real. I hear If you could do anything in the whole world, what would you do? What was your dream to be as a kid? Like, what did you dream to be when you were younger? Oh, I wanted to be an artist, man. To paint, sculptures, all of that. That's cool. Man. That's really cool. Actually, my I got an uncle that's an artist. He had put me in um, Maryland Institute of Art. Okay. You know, I liked it, but, I, but as time went on, I, I was being silly. I wanted to be in the street, smoke weed, right. drink. So I thought that was cooler than going to art school. Right. So I messed that chance up. Uh -huh. Was there anyone specific that helped you get over or help you move past drugs in your life? My children, man. I didn't want to see. I, I didn't want my children to see me nodding or sniffing dope or. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Robbing people. Right. I ain't want them to see them. Well, that's amazing. Maybe we should all go have some kids, right? I mean, I don't, I don't know, because a lot of people got kids and, it's, and they kids rob people with them, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Right. But for you, like, it really helped change your life around having kids dead. Using drugs made me do things that I couldn't even comprehend at the time. Now that I'm awoke a little bit and mm -hmm. I can see, I'm sorry, man. To anybody in my life that I hurt, I'm so sorry. Forgive right. me, you know what I'm saying? Forgive Absolutely. me for my past. Right. I'm a different person. So how do we forgive ourselves and how do other people forgive us? I, I don't know because like I just said that, right. deep in my soul and my heart, I can't forgive myself. And that's what eats me up. Yeah. Somebody may forgive me, right? Yeah. But I can't forgive myself. Man. How do we let it go? I don't know. That's why I pray, man. People done a whole lot of Stuff to things you. to me. I've been abused in certain situations, you know. Right. I, I done been through a lot of things, right? And um, that might have played a part of me doing wrong to others, you know. But but the people who did what they did to me, I I, I guess I forgive them, you know. Right. I, I have to. That's so hard, know. isn't it? Yeah. So what are the words that you say to yourself about the people that have wronged you in your life? Like, how do you? move past that a little bit. I mean, most of the people who done me wrong in my life, they did. I had to come to grips with the fact that um, I'm mad with a dead person. Yeah. How do you handle that? Right. Right? Because this person's not even here now. Right. So who I lash out on? They gone. Right. It's gone. Right. Just like the memories of what they did, gone. Right. You know, so. Uh, yeah. That's such a great perspective, like to say. And then also, even if they are alive, the person that you're upset at, are they actually? Do they actually know or even have a right, level of right. care for the fact that you're upset? Right. They probably forgot or probably don't even remember. Right. And I'm mad about some real crazy shit that they did to me. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, beat me half to the death or right. Hold me over a banister in a shopping mall. Oh my God. You know what I'm saying? Right. And I confront them about that, and they talking about cookies and milk and shit. Right. They're not even registering what right, you're talking right. about. I'm really so. not a fan of the seatbelt, man. Oh, yeah, it's annoying, oh, right? Man. Come on, man. <laughs> Hold up, I'm on TV, man. Hold up. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming out. Yeah, really appreciate peace, it. Thank man. you for sharing your testimony yeah. and your, um, your word and your story with us. I really no appreciate it. So if you have anything, give us a shout out, okay? Yeah. Well, we're here on Destinations. Welcome. What's your first name? Jamal. Jamal. John. Nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you too. Where'd you grow up? Park Heights, sorry. Nice. Northwest Baltimore. It got its little obstacles. It just depends on which route you take. Right, right. Uh, what was your favorite thing about growing up? Oh, uh, man. 
and get in everything and don't get in trouble like that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. I think back then, being, yeah. a, being younger, it was more fun. It was, right. you can actually live. You right. know, had, had to worry about the reality of what yeah. in real life. Now, you gotta look over your shoulder and worry about if something gonna happen to you. You gonna right. wake up the next day or see another day, so. Right. It's just living. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. What was your, what was the worst thing that happened to you when you were a kid? The worst thing? Hit by a car. Dang. I was like 11. Holy <laughs> cow. I was like 11, yeah. Right. The car hit me so hard, both my shoes flew off. Shut up. <laughs> Flipped over the car. Wow. And the glass had split my lip a little bit. I mean, that was, oh my I, God. I, I would say that was the worst thing. Cause when I was a child, right. I always had like a, a good, you know, a good childhood. Right, right. Like my early teens, that's when it started getting kind of rough. Okay. Me being a child, the things I used to get and you know, the things I'm used to getting or my mother being able to afford right. and everything, she couldn't afford that at that yeah. time. Like once I, it was like, it started getting rougher for us, yeah. you know? And right. she tried her best, like she had little jobs, private duty jobs, yeah. but it was hard, man. Like it yeah. was time we ain't really had no food in the house. Right. And it had to make it work. Right. It was just, it was rough. We've been homeless. Yeah. We was homeless on a few occasions. How did that make you feel when you had to go through that? Low. Yeah. The low is a low, yeah. man. It make it make it make, you, it make you not want to live no more. Right. It kind of make you just it make you ask God, like, why are you putting me through this? Right. What were the words that went through your head to talk yourself through that situation? Pray. Ask God to get me through it. Right. You know, just just ask God to just be like, man, it gotta be some type of good out of this right got to and every time we was homeless some type of good and mother find a new house yeah something nice here get a new job good job get right. a car but then it's always something might happen go back down here and yeah. you know so been through a lot of obstacles man yeah, a lot right. of a lot of stuff happened exactly. man just been trying like just trying to get back on my feet like now there's something to keep me out the streets exactly you know Cause it's easy to get in the streets, right? But it's hard. It's hard to get out. Right. <laughs> yeah, man. That's all that is. Just trying to stay focused, work. Right. That way I can stay out of trouble. Exactly. Stay out the way, man. The bottom will get you caught up. What's ways that somebody's uh, shown you love when you were younger or now? Like, what? How do people show love to you? Being younger. Yeah. I was like one of them favorite kids when I was younger. Like my family used to spoil me when I was young. Yeah. Every day, yeah. on my father's side, I'm the only child okay. on my father's side. Okay. So, on my mother's side, it's me, and I got three other siblings. Okay. So it was always kind of hard, you know? Yeah. Like, she tried her best to make it do for all of us. Right, right. Do you know your father, or has he, was he in the picture? Or like, I heard you mention yeah, your mom he, a couple times. Like, my father, he was in the picture right. until about when I can't turn, like, like Six, seven. Okay. Yeah. Like my father had his little obstacles down here and went through. He went through his thing and right. he had moved to um to Philadelphia right. and get himself together and get right. clean because right. he was getting high when he was down here. Yeah. And he never came back to Baltimore. Oh, really? So me being younger and him not being there, I always thought that he just left and walked out my life. Yeah. I was real rebellious to, towards him, like where it was. Yeah. I, I looked at him different. I felt like inside, like I hated him. Yeah. But as I got older, it took for me to become a man, get right. and get older, and really sit and have a conversation with him. Right. And the conversation was more so, if I'd have stayed in Baltimore, right. I probably wouldn't have made. I probably would have died, or I probably right. would, have, would have been still getting high. Right. So we closer now. That's good. That's we closer good. now. But then, you know. <laughs> What are the words that you had to use in order to forgive him? Like, what did you have to say to yourself, and what, and how did you, how did that forgiveness look? My words to him more so was, "Pop, I don't hate you. I just don't understand why you didn't fight. You know, right. like why you ain't fight to try to stay in my life. Right. 
other than waiting to the last minute. I told him, I always told him, I said, I, I still love you. I said, I know you meant well. Right. Cause he always sent me money. Even though he was in Philly, he'll try to send me money here and there to help out, but right. he still was struggling, trying yeah. to survive on his own, starting over right. from where he was came from. Exactly. What are ways that people should be fighting for their loved ones? What's ways that they can reach out and love somebody, even though they may live in another city? Like, how, how, what are things that you think that he could have done to love you, even though he was in a different city? That time, right. even though he in a different city, I feel like the visits, yeah, the calls, the phone right. calls, it was times where I ain't heard from him in months. Right. So that always stuck with me and right. it scarred me yeah. mentally. So. I hear you. That was, I feel like as a man or a parent or a family, stay in touch with your family, communicate right. with them. Just one phone call saying, hey, I yeah. love you, right. that mean a lot. And so for you, like how often would you want somebody to call you and say, hey, I love you and I'm caring about you? Like what's a regular an, amount, you know what I mean? When I was younger, I would, yeah. I, I would look at it like if my mother, if I didn't hear from my mother father, mm -hmm. it would make me mad. But now that I'm older with kids, right. my kids, yeah. I hear from them so much, the right. way it's just, that's all I need. You know? like, yeah. If I hear from my kids, right. that's all I need to hear from. Once my kids came, it was more so like, like you can't do the same thing right, you're doing right. you doing. You got to grow up and right. find a job. You got to, it's time to man up and become a man. So that's what I did. That's great. It, I lost a lot of friends behind it, but I mean, it just showed the reality of who was really there and who wasn't. Right, exactly. And you get to develop a deeper relationship with your family yes, and dump yeah. time into the kids and stuff like that and exactly. and for what your future is going to be. Exactly. So where do you see yourself? Where are you, where are you headed to now? Well, right now, I'm ready to go in the house. <laughs> Lay it out, get out these work clothes. Right, right. I just want my own business one day, man. Okay. I want my own business. I want to be able to, to, to start something that where I know, okay, I work hard to get right. that and I earned that. Like, what are the top two things that you would do if you could start a business Honestly, right now? I would open like a nice restaurant lounge, okay. like yeah. a restaurant with a nice lounge. Right. And I would I would have like a, a, like a big recording studio. Oh, cool. Yeah, I actually make beats. I used to oh. play the piano when I was younger. That's cool. Yep, so Very I, cool. I always, I always been in, in touch with music, but you know how as years go by, certain right. things you, you don't, fully focus on as much, but if I right. actually put the full time into it, I think I can be somewhere. Well, you're worthy now. Like, you can do anything you want. You don't have to get a stamp or something like that or have to have some sort of diploma in order to be able to do what you want to do, you know? Like, you can get out there and do it. You just have to dream big and go do it, you know? Yeah, man.